Hello and welcome to Open Network Learning ONL 201. The, we are the organizing team for this course and it's great to see you all and uh, we thought with this video we'll just present you the basics about the course, uh, give you a little bit of an overview in the first week and a little bit about who we are. So my name is Alistair Creelman, I work at Linnaeus University in Kalmar in the southeast of Sweden and I'd like to present my colleagues. And I'm next. Uh, my name is Lotta Åbjörnsson. I work as an educational developer at Lund University in the very south of Sweden. My name is Jörg Paraigis. I'm the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Karlstad University in the middle of Sweden. I'm Lars Udin. I work as an educational developer in Linköping University, uh, also in the southern part of Sweden, not the very south, but welcome to the course. Looking forward to see you. Uh, and I'm Maria Karlström. I work as an educational developer at Karolinska Institutet in Stockholm. I uh, really look forward to uh, the new iteration. So let's have a little look at the course itself and uh, the structure, a little bit about how it's going to work and just give you a general quick overview of what to expect in the next few weeks. So Open Network Learning ONL 201 is the first course of 2020. We've been running this course uh, since 2014 and uh, we've had uh, two iterations per year, uh, almost all the years that we've been doing it. So slowly but surely we've, it's been evolving and changing and uh, we listen to the feedback and we change accordingly. So it's an ever changing course. Anyway, the idea very much is to focus on online collaboration and community building online and learning in networks. It's a chance for you to expand your network of international contacts. You're going to meet people from different countries, cultures and disciplines and work together to solve problems and learn that online learning can be collaborative, um, engaging, and above all social. It can be a lot of fun. You can see people, you can laugh, you can uh, be frustrated together. It's an amazing experience. It's also an aspect of what today is called virtual mobility. And instead of interacting and we meeting with international colleagues by flying, we are going to do that digitally. And uh, that fits in very nicely with uh, environmental considerations today. ONL is not really a course in educational technology. We're not going to show you which buttons to press uh, so much. We're not going to go into the technical aspects. You are welcome to try new tools and we encourage you to do that and you'll have to spend time learning how to use them. But the course is very much about using technology in a pedagogical way in teaching and learning. So let's go. The ONL community consists of you, the learners, and the course team. On most courses, there are between 100 and 130 participants. And they come from a wide range of institutions. And here for this term, you can see the partner universities that are involved this time round. A lot from Sweden, but we also have from Finland, Switzerland, Germany, Singapore, and South Africa. And added to that little mix, we have our open learners and they get into the course by signing up. Uh, by, they come in via social media and word of mouth and they come from all sorts of countries and institutions and provide an extra variety and diversity to the course and very, very valuable they are too. So about 20 to 30 open learners come in for each course. Now these are, you'll all be working in study groups known as problem-based learning groups, PBL groups. There will be about eight of you in each group and you will be mixed from different institutions. So you are very unlikely to have a colleague from your own institution in your PBL group. As well as that, you will have the help of facilitators who come from the partner institutions experienced members of the ONL team 
who will be in a way, they'll be facilitating rather than teaching the groups, helping you to learn, helping you to work together and uh, yeah, providing you with references and ideas and feedback. Together with the facilitator, there is a co-facilitator and the co-facilitator's job is really to be a study buddy, to be someone to give a sympathetic ear to your problems, to help you in, when you have difficulties, because a co-facilitator is a former participant who has passed the course, enjoyed it a lot, and comes back as a volunteer. Now remember that, they're not being paid for this, uh, they are doing it purely because they enjoy learning. Um, they all get certificates at the end, of course, but we appreciate their effort enormously. But they are there really to give you a, a sort of little backup in your work. The course consists of a number of topics, but we also have put in other weeks because we realize that it, a course online has to involve a socialization process. We have to get to know each other. We have to get familiar with the environment and we have to prepare for the journey we're going on. That's why we have the first two weeks are called getting started and connecting. This is where you get to know the learning environment, you present a profile of yourself, and in the second week you will meet your team members in the PBL group and get to know each other. Then the real work starts with the topics. Topic one is about online participation and digital literacies. Topic two about open learning. Then we take another break for reflection. And that's very good to be for some people to be able to catch up with the work, but also to reflect a little, get your blogs up to date and so on. Then we move into topic three, which is learning in communities. Topic four, design for online and blended learning. And finally, in the last week, we put it all together and consider what have we learned? What can we implement in our own teaching and learning? And what does this mean for the future? And that really is the course. However, you may be interested to find out a little bit about how it's structured from week to week. So here's a diagram and uh, I will try and walk you through it. It looks a bit complex, doesn't it? But the course is 12 weeks. Here at the top line, you can see the different, top, different topics that I've just outlined. And here are the different sort of spaces where you will be working. You'll be working as a large community for the whole course, the ONL 201 community space. This is a, like a discussion forum where you can interact with all the people on the course. However, from the second week, you will be working mostly in your PBL groups. And there, there will be intensive discussion and uh, exchange of information and ideas, collaborative work, and that's where you'll be working most of the time. However, there is also an individual strand because you will also be expected to create a blog. That's something to do in the first two weeks if you haven't already done it and write a blog post for each topic where you reflect on what you have learned, how it influences your own teaching, maybe give some examples and give some references. So we're, we've got the sort of three levels of involvement, the individual involvement, the group involvement and the course involvement. And during this time, as we see at the bottom, there will be a number of common activities like webinars for everybody. They're not compulsory, but we advise you to take part in them because they're enjoyable and you can get ideas for the group work. We'll also be letting you try a chat on Twitter, known as a tweet chat. And we may have some other surprises for you. Let's see. So that's the overview. If we now dive into one particular topic, let's see how that pans out. And here you see the work for one topic, a two, two week period. At the start of the topic, you will find on the ONL website, the topic introduction and a scenario for the two weeks. The scenario is a problem that you will provide a solution to by working with your colleagues in your PBL groups. So you'll get that generally the Friday before the topic starts and that'll be available on the main website. 
You will then probably have a group meeting at the beginning of the week to have a look at the scenario, look at the topic information and start deciding what are we going to do about this? What do we need to investigate and find out more about? What do we already know? How can we answer this question, the scenario that we have and plan the work for the next two weeks? And you'll be meeting probably twice a week. We strongly recommend two meetings a week. When you meet and how you meet, that is up to each group to decide. But two meetings a week, if possible. We'll also give you the webinar where you'll get more information about the topic and maybe some new ideas. And you'll work as the large community, as the group and individually through the two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, your group will produce a presentation in some form, a film, an animation, uh, maybe a podcast, maybe an anime, a, a sort of presentation in some way. And you'll present that to the whole community and hopefully get some feedback. Individually, you'll write your individual reflection on your blog and you will get feedback and comments from your peers and from some of the facilitators. So that's really what to expect. You'll find out more by reading on the website about ONL, about clicking and testing things, and we'll have an introductory webinar to say hello to you all at the beginning of week two. So good luck with the journey. I look forward to meeting you. And uh, yeah, that's all for now.